So history is one of the subjects that a lot of people study, in many cases endure, at school. Now, you might think that history is one of those subjects that is really not much use, not very important, maybe fun if you like it, but it's not going to actually make a difference to the world. Actually, that's very untrue. The way you think about history has a profound effect upon the way you think about the present, the world in which you live. Most of us carry historical stories around in our heads, and those stories that we just have in our mind without even knowing that we've got them there in most cases, have a huge influence on the way we think about the world we're in, how it's developed, where it's going, and what the meaning of various events that are going on actually are. Now, what I want to argue is that the story most of us have uh, is actually rather misleading. And if you think about the past from the point of view of an economist, but indeed from other points of view as well, you'll realize that there are other ways of thinking about the past. And these ways of thinking about the past are actually in many ways more enlightening if you want to actually understand why we live the way we do and how we live the way we do. So what I'm going to talk about now then is two ways of thinking about history, as it says here. Now, here are some familiar dates. These are dates that I think anyone who has studied history, and indeed many people who've not studied history, would be familiar with. The 4th of July, 1776, the American Declaration of Independence, of course. Uh, the 14th of July, 1789, the fall of the Bastille and the start of the French Revolution. Then two dates there from 1917 uh, in both the Gregorian uh, calendar uh, and the Julian calendar. Uh, and those are, of course, the dates of the two revolutions that took place in Russia in that year. The earlier one in February there uh, is the one that actually overthrew the Tsar, a liberal revolution that brought the provisional government to power. Uh, and then the second one in October uh, is the Bolshevik coup d'etat, the seizure of power by the Bolshevik party, which led to the creation of the Soviet Union. Then we have the 30th of January, 1933. I think most people would guess that that's the, uh, the date when Hitler came to power. It's also uh, the time when Franklin Roosevelt takes office in the United States. Uh, 18th of June, 1815, uh, the Battle of Waterloo. The 15th uh, of June, 1215, the signing of Magna Carta, or actually more appropriate, the sealing of Magna Carta at Runnymede by King John. Uh, the next date is one that uh, some people might find a bit more tricky, but that's actually also another very important date. It's the date of the Battle of Sekigahara, uh, in which united Japan uh, after nearly several centuries of civil war. And then finally, uh, that date in 1914, that was the date on which Britain joined uh, the Great War. Now, even if you don't know exactly what those are, you can probably guess what it is. Most people would guess, for example, that the final date has something to do with the Great War of 1914-1918. They, they would know enough to know that. And so these are all dates that are familiar to most people. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us something about a certain kind of story. What do these dates have in common? When you think about it, the answer is they're all dates about politics. They are all dates about war and political power, revolutions and the like. They're all dates, in other words, that have to do with who has political power, when that political power has changed, and how it is exercised. What kind of story are they the key points in? Well, these are key milestones or dates in a story about the growth of different states and governments. They are key points in a narrative that is built around a story about how particular forms of government and particular, uh, particular actual states have come into being and developed over time. That's the main story here. That's the big theme of it. Now, what would you conclude from this? What you would conclude, I think, is that the most important thing in human life, the thing that determines other things, shapes the way people live, is politics and the exercise of power. You would conclude that if you want to explain why people live the way they do, or why they feel and think the way they do, or why, generally speaking, the world is the way that it is, 
that the answer to those questions is to be found by looking at the history of politics, the history of who has power, where they've got it from, and how they have used it. Now here are some less familiar dates. Uh, the one at the top, as it says here, is the publication of Newton's Principia, the uh, book in which he set out uh, his principle of universal gravitation and three laws of motion. Uh, reckoned by many historians to be the most important book of the last thousand years, believe it or not. The next date, the other thing that happened in 1776, besides the American Declaration of Independence, the publication of Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations and the origin of the modern discipline of economics. 1859, the publication of The Origin of Species by Darwin, and the introduction of the idea, not of evolution, which was an old idea at Darwin's time, but of natural selection. That date there is the date of a press conference held, I believe, in a pub uh, by Crick and Watson, in which they announced their discovery of the structure of DNA. 1882 was the year in which the German biologist Robert Koch uh, did his groundbreaking work on tuberculosis uh, and set out the so-called principles uh, of bacteriological analysis, which still bear his name. The earlier date there, 1862, relates to the work done by Louis Pasteur, uh, and in particular his groundbreaking experiments, which basically confirmed the germ theory of disease. Now here's an entirely different list. So you might have recognized some of the dates on the previous list, but I doubt you'll recognize any of the dates on this list. And I've put down here the kind of things that they are the dates for. The first flight of the jumbo jet, the first commercial flight that is. The first voyage by a container ship in 1956. The first transatlantic radio message from Valencia Island off the coast of Ireland to Newfoundland by Marconi. Uh, the Transatlantic Telegraph, the first message transmitted by the Transatlantic Telegraph in 1858, a message from Queen Victoria to President Buchanan. Those two dates there relate to the first use of the electric light bulb, uh, one of them in Newcastle upon Tyne and one of them in New York, because the electric light bulb is simultaneously invented by Joseph Swan in Newcastle and Thomas Edison in New York. Uh, that is the date of the production of the first Model T Ford. And as it says here, 15 million of them had been produced by 1927. Those two dates there are key dates in the history of contraception. 1855 saw the production of the first latex condom. 1960 was the date on which uh, the contraceptive pill was made available under license by the American Food and Drugs Administration. Now here, the last is one that may prove to be significant, but we don't know for sure yet, uh, which is the flight of Spaceship One. So all of these are completely different kind of events, totally different sort of events to the first list that I showed you. But what I would argue is that actually the events in this list are more important than the events in that first one. And that these events here, along with the events in the previous list, the publications of things like the Principia or the Origin of Species, actually do more to explain the world than the political events that you saw in that first list. Now, what kind of story are we telling here? Well, what kind of stories do those two previous slides show? What they show is a story where the central events are things like growth in knowledge, the appearance of new ways of thinking about the world, the development of interconnection between people in different parts of the world, and above all, the transformation of everyday ordinary life. Because if you think about the events that were listed in that last slide, they are all things that fundamentally change the way people lived. If you're a woman, then 1960 is probably the most important year in the whole of recorded human history because it fundamentally changed what until then had been an essential part of the female experience. The fact that you could not control your fertility reliably, which meant that you were constantly uh, at the mercy of your biology. That totally changed the life experience and the expectance uh, of women. Similarly, the Model T Ford completely changed 
the whole of American society and then by extension societies around the world by introducing modern things like mass mobility, the growth of the motor car built suburb. But also it wasn't just the car itself, it was what lay behind it. Ford's introduction of the assembly line and of mass production uh, on a truly large scale, which again, completely transformed the nature of the world of work uh, and the whole social life of people. You can make similar points for all of the dates on that list. All of them represent a breakthrough in technology, in ideas, in innovations, which completely changed the world and did so by changing it at the level of the everyday experience of ordinary people. Uh, and you cannot understand the world in which we live now without, for example, understanding the impact and effect of the container ship and the way in which it made possible the kind of enormously integrated global economy that we now live in. Now, what conclusions do you draw from this about what matters? Well, the conclusion you should draw really is that what matters is not so much politics. It's innovation, human creativity, human exchange relationships, trade, intellectual exploration, and intellectual discovery, uh, the dis kinds of discoveries that Newton made while he was hiding away from the plague out in the countryside uh, and came up with the law of gravitation. These are the things that really matter. Politics, if you think about those lists there, is actually a secondary matter. It's something which takes place within the framework created by these other kinds of processes. And so you come to a very different conclusion about what is really important in human history and also about who it is that matters. Because instead of the really important people being uh, kings, rulers, uh, priests and uh, gen generals, you will come to the conclusion that the really important people are engineers, scientists, intellectual, businessmen, entrepreneurs, people of that sort, also artists perhaps. Uh, now, that's the big question. Why are they arguably more important? Uh, and I've already answered that. They're more important because these are things that have affected everyday life in a way that even a major event like the Great War, for example, does not. After the Great War is over, a lot of people have been killed and there's a lot of political change, but the actual conditions of life in Britain are not that much different from what they had been uh, in that summer of 1914, four years earlier. Whereas uh, by the end of the 1930s, the everyday life of Britain had been completely transformed by the advent of the radio, which had been pioneered way back in 1900 by Marconi. That had completely changed uh, the experience of people in terms of their entertainment, how they got knowledge about the world, uh, and how also increasingly uh, how they understood how the rest of the world was. So those dates in the second list have a more profound effect, you could argue, than the ones in the first. So when you think about history, it's going to make you think about the world in which you live. Most of the time, this is not done at a conscious level. People are not really aware that they're carrying a kind of historical story in their head. Uh, and so they're not aware, most people, most of the time, that they think about the world in a way that privileges the actions of politicians and rulers as being the ones that actually uh, are important and that drive the way the future is going to be. If you think about history in this different way, if you think rather about the enormously transformative uh, impact that entrepreneurs and engineers, inventors, intellectuals, uh, and artists can have on the world, then you'll actually realize that uh, maybe politics is not that important. Maybe you need to spend more time looking at what is going on in the world of technology and engineering, or in the world of the mind, in the world of the arts, because that is what is probably going to give you a better idea about the direction in which things are going. And the final concluding thought is that if you focus on politics and its often bloody consequences, such as wars, political oppression and the like, uh, then you will often come up with a rather gloomy and pessimistic view about the course of human history and about where we are. 
you will indeed come to think that history is, as somebody once said, just one damn thing after another. Whereas if you think more about the way in which over the course of time, human beings have become better off, have become wealthier, have become more connected, and have learned from each other through the process of peaceful contact and exchange, which is the other kind of story that we were looking at there, then you're likely to be much more optimistic, both about the past and even more importantly, about the future.